Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Rancher. Today, we're going to be doing a short but sweet instructional video. It's basically going to be a guide of how to tell if your engine is running rich or it's running lean when we're talking specifically about carburetors. Carburetor in question that we're looking at today is my Holly 750 Vacuum Secondary. Uh, I've had a bunch of different carburetors on this engine. I've had a Demon 625, Demon 575, a Holly 650 double pumper 600 double pumper 750 double pumper 670 street avenger and like an 1850 and a four too many different carburetors to uh, list i'm also going to be sharing some diagnostic tips toward the end of the video so make sure you stick around so what i'm going to do i haven't started it up so it's, this is going to be a cold start i mean it's not very cold it's like 90 degrees outside right now but you know we all do what we can do and Okay, so let's go ahead and start this up. Let's make sure it's a neutral. I'm just gonna go one, two, three, hold the throttle, open a hair, turn it on, and... And we're all good to go. Okay, while well, I'm allowing my engine to warm up, you guys can kind of hear it's got a pretty consistent idle. Um, when a, an engine is started for the first time, when it's cold, the engine tends to run a little off, whether that's rich or that's lean. It can be any one of those two, and it just depends on the intake manifold design and the type of head and compression. As it warms up, it'll start completely burning up all the fuel that enters it, and it'll start to stabilize after the engine's up to operating temperature, that's when you can actually do a little bit of tuning. So what has happened in the past is I've had carburetors that I set up while it's fairly cold. Like let's say right now I set up the idle uh, and then as soon as it warms up, it's gonna start running lean because I, I leaned it out a little bit to get it to idle clearly. And then all of a sudden, as soon as it warms up because of the way air travels and air expands and the gas expands as well, it tends to use up all the fuel completely and then it starts running lean so you want to go ahead and set it up after it's already warm so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab a screwdriver and we're actually going to mess up my idle quality right now and i don't have my screwdriver okay i've got my screwdriver this time and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to lean it out just a hair so i'm going to go to both sides of the two corner idle carburetor so we're going to go ahead and just take the two corners and just turn them in about a quarter of an inch. And I actually just heard the idle go down. Let's go ahead and do both sides just to really mess it up. So what you're going to start noticing as an engine gets leaner, it's going to start popping out through the exhaust. Let's see if you can hear it. It's not that noticeable right now, so let's go ahead and turn it another quarter of an inch to really exaggerate the situation. You're gonna start hearing intermittent popping. It'll just be idling and it'll go pop, 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 pop. Like just random popping out through the exhaust. That definitely tells you that it's a lean condition. If you are trying to accelerate it and it pops through the intake, then you have a lean condition or you don't have enough timing but typically if you already have your timing all set up the rest is going to be pretty straightforward so the next thing you want to look at when you're running lean is that when you're accelerating you feel hesitation you start feeling stuttering and then it'll kind of want to clear up and then it stutters and then so a lot of that happens when you're at part throttle and you go to switch from part throttle to a little bit more throttle when you're going into the main jets you're going to feel a little bit of hesitation and that hesitation is actually a lean condition. So now we're gonna go in the opposite direction. It's running pretty poorly right now. So I had everything at one half turn out. So I'm gonna go back to that one half turn spot and then I'm gonna turn it a quarter turn above that. So. So now I'm at one and three quarters of a turn. And let's see if I can do the same thing. Oh, 
All right, so right now I've got it at one and three quarters of a turn out. It's definitely running rich. I'm gonna try to put you guys to see if you guys can hear the exhaust. So a couple things about the exhaust, you guys can might be able to tell by the video, but it's smoking. You guys might be able to tell from right here that it's actually smoking a little bit. The idle is kind of kind of sounds like if it had a kind of a lopy cam, the exhaust note becomes really, really like deep and kind of hollow, if that makes sense. Kind of like not throaty, not crisp, but kind of like a deep hollow, kind of like an old school muscle car sound. That's how you know you're running rich. When you're running rich out on the road, you're gonna tell that you're driving pretty clean, pretty normal, and you go to accelerate or you're driving and you're noticing that you're losing power, but the engine's not acting weird. So what happens when you're running rich, you're adding more fuel than the spark plug can ignite. So it's like you're putting water on the flame because liquid fuel can't really uh, light anything on fire. So what ends up happening is you end up putting out the spark and you start losing power, you start losing fuel economy. But overall it tends to run good because it's not running lean, you're not hurting the engine except for maybe washing out the cylinders. If you're smoking kind of like what I am right now, as the engine's warming up, it's starting to get a little bit more smoky. So you guys should be able to tell that this is not good for the motor. As soon as I turn that in, you're going to be able Clearly here, this thing clears right up. So I'm back at a half turn out on this side. And then we're gonna go back to one half turn and you're gonna hear a clear difference. And there you go. All right, so I'm back to my original settings and you guys are gonna notice that the engine's not idling as nice as it was before. And the reason for that is because when you go super rich, you end up fouling your spark plug. When it does that, the spark becomes weaker because it doesn't have a clear ground to go to. And if it doesn't have a clear ground to go to, uh, you will start losing power and it'll cause misfires. But as soon as you lean it out to where you're supposed to be, Eventually, the spark plug is going to start cleaning itself because now it can just burn off whatever excess fuel it had deposited into the spark plug. So even after you do a tune-up and you set the idle to maximum RPM, you're going to be running into a little bit of a misfire, but that usually clears up after a couple miles of you driving it and while it cleans up the rest of the spark plugs. So which one would be more dangerous, running rich or running lean? and that really depends on the situation for a daily driver cruiser uh doing whatever you need to do running rich is actually more dangerous because you are allowing more fuel to enter the cylinders you're allowing more washing of the cylinder wall so you're not getting oil proper lubrication to the cylinder walls and eventually you're going to wear out the engine to the point where you can't even rebuild it because you've tapered it so far and the engine block is too far gone but in a racing application lean is actually more dangerous because you're overheating the combustion chamber you will eventually cause holes to be created inside of the piston you will cause uh, exhaust valves to break you will cause too many problems detonation pre-ignition are all caused by lean conditions and poor air fuel ratios so you do need to watch that when the engine succumbs to high intensity situations the easiest way to tell if your engine is running rich or lean is by actually looking at the color of the spark plugs, but that only gives you a general output. So what I mean by that is if you have a really rich idle and you do a lot of idling, you do a lot of low RPM, light throttle cruising, but your main jets and secondary circuit are all lean, since the majority of your time is spent in the low RPM range and the low light throttle range, you're going to show a rich condition in the spark plugs, which is why some people say that when you're tuning your carburetor, you got to be changing the spark plugs whenever you decide to change any 
particular circuit. So if you go to change the main jets, you would put a spark plug in it and you'd go drive it and you'd go into the main jets and see if it's running rich or lean. Then the modern times, you don't really need to do that since you do have an AFR gauge and you can go ahead and figure that out yourself. Another way to do it if you have enough tools is to actually get yourself a jet kit and actually just start going down in the jets until you start feeling hesitation and then you go up one jet see if it clears up and then you would go up one more jet just for good measure and the good measure is for general drivability so if your engine tends to start misfiring after 14 and a half to one if we're talking air fuel ratios and one jet up will bring it down to high 13s low 14s put one more jet into it to put you right in the mid 13s and that'll get you rolling no matter if it's too cold outside if it's too hot outside uh, if it's too cold, you're going to run in the 14s, low 14s. It's too hot, you're going to be running in the high 12s. And both of those are perfectly acceptable to be driving around on the street. No questions asked. You can do the same thing for the secondary circuit. And then for the primary circuit, you can actually put your hand over the choke tower to see how the engine responds. If you put the, your hand over the choke tower and the RPM goes up, it means you're running too lean and you need to add more fuel if you put your hand over it and the rpm goes down it means you're running too rich and you need to go ahead and take fuel out of it but when you're adjusting your idle just go a quarter turn at a time per side and just because one side gets better don't immediately continue adjusting that go to the other side and do the same thing because you want to try to keep it as balanced as possible in the dual plane intake you won't really have a perfectly balanced situation because of the different runner lengths one side is going to be technically longer than the other side so one side is going to want a little bit more fuel than the other side and the reason you want to be jetting down when you're tuning instead of up is because most carburetors are actually tuned rich from the factory and also it's harder to locate a rich condition than it is to locate a lean condition if your engine starts stumbling you know you went too far but in a rich condition you can go pretty far and the engine will still run pretty good because you won't notice that you just lost 20 30 horsepower so I've got plenty of other carb tuning videos. You guys just got to look up and open up the playlist and watch them one by one to get an overall picture of what you should be doing when you're tuning. So that's about it. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.